I'm Gail Bishop. I'm the past president of the American Association of Immunologists here at our 2014 meeting in Pittsburgh. And I'm still a professor of microbiology and immunology at the University of Iowa, where I direct the Center for Immunology and Immune-Based Diseases, and I'm the associate director for the Cancer Center. And I'm Paula Lutz. I'm presently the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Wyoming. It's been a wonderful thing to develop a friendship that proceeds along both personal lines and along the tracks of a joint shared interest in a scientific field. I think it's been very special, unique, and precious. Well, I would agree with that. and. Um, I'll publicly thank Gail for keeping me involved in AAI uh, by recruiting me to the Committee for Public Affairs. Uh, that worked well with my work as an administrator and, and beginning to work with legislators in my home states on funding issues, both for the university as a whole and also for research funding. So I think that was really an important thing for me in my career, and I certainly enjoyed that. I would also say that we've supported each other in other ways. I recently was asked on my campus at the University of Wyoming to give a very short talk about anything I wanted for Women's History Month. And I chose to speak about the strong women in my life. And um, when I got to the colleagues, uh, Gail was one of the two colleagues that I, that I spotlighted as being very influential and as someone that uh, I believe I supported and that she supported me. So science is really challenging these days on all levels. A lot of stress on people to have those relationships that back it up, to know that you both have that love for the profession, that love for discovering new things, and that you're facing the same challenges definitely gives you more strength to do that. And one thing really struck me, we were out and about for a little bit in Pittsburgh yesterday and um, stopped somewhere to make a purchase. And the, the clerk was very chatty and was asking us where we were from. We were telling her a little bit about how we'd been coming to this meeting together for all these years. And she just looked at us and she said, how lucky you are to have each other. And I thought, how right she is. That's, that's uh, so true. And I wanted to say that uh, Gail has also been a source of great information for me. I'm in a position now as a dean where I'm recruiting a lot of young people, and uh, both men and women with families, and, and uh, many of them are scientists. So uh, it helps keep me in touch with uh, what's going on in our field and, and across uh, various disciplines in science, and what are the best things I can recommend to my young people, how to get them to get a, to get a good start. So um, I'm, I think we're still helping one another and uh, providing advice and, and counsel as we've moved in different directions in our jobs, but um, there's a lot of synergy there. Well, immunology's changed tremendously, of course, all the new discoveries, but also the technology. We, we geezers laugh about all the things that took us a week to do, like DNA sequencing by hand, and now people take it to the core. And mm -hmm. things that people buy a kit for that we used to do each step mm -hmm. by hand, and just technology. I mean, everything's online now. I mean, we remember back to when you sent in manuscripts to the Journal of Immunology in paper, and you had to get the figures all drawn by illustrators, and it was artwork. And, and grants and, on yeah, paper, yeah. Right? shipped by FedEx at the last minute. <laughs> it's all electronic now. And we used to um, make phone calls home using phone cards that you had to buy before you left home and have X number of minutes put on them. And you know, it's just all so different. Uh, and always will be. I mean, every, everything moves forward, and you just have to keep up. <laughs> and it's, it's fascinating now, having been in the field for this long, um, to, to understand that we, there were certain places where, in immunology, we moved forward, and then we had to stop because we didn't have the techniques to, to uh, answer 
a particular question. And interesting things were going on in other areas, but um, perhaps uh, we weren't making as much progress as we really wanted to make in a, in a particular area. And then all of a sudden there's a new technique that comes on the scene. And um, maybe it's something that eventually wins someone a Nobel Prize, like monoclonal antibody technology. Yeah, I remember gene that. Gene sequencing. Yeah. Um, and suddenly you can do things that uh, uh, you almost never thought possible. Uh, and you're making these giant leaps and answering the big questions. We just came out of uh, a cancer immunotherapy uh, uh, session to come over here. And uh, I thought back when I was looking for tumor-specific antigens in ovarian cancer back in the 70s, how different uh, that was and how much even though uh, people might say well we haven't cured cancer we've made such great strides and the the effect that immunology and immunologists have had on that area of medicine is uh, is just fascinating